Welcome back Hyperspinners, Avar here with another tutorially awesome episode of AV Archivist. Today we'll be discussing how to convert simple, screen-wide artwork for use in widescreen themes. In order to keep my tutorial succinct, I'll avoid revisiting previously covered material. From here on, we'll be learning how to approach the challenges faced in dealing with different types of themes and artwork. For the basic theory and theme conversion process, I encourage you to check out parts 1 and 2 of this series. From this point forward, even if theme conversion itself doesn't interest you, we'll be gradually learning how to use Photoshop and Flash Pro, so this series will also be a good way to build your comfort level with these programs, step by step. Now, let's begin today by defining what I mean by screen-wide artwork. In the context of theme conversion, I'm referring to any artwork element that has lateral components reaching near the left and right sides of your display. Like backgrounds. Last time we worked with backgrounds that didn't need resizing, and today we'll learn how to manually redraw simple backgrounds and artwork with features like borders, or with multiple elements combined onto a single artwork file. For our example today we'll be using Canyon Bomber from the Atari Classics and MAME sets. This theme features both a more complex background and artwork components with spanned elements. It also looks very rough when stretched and has some minor defects that we can fix, so it's perfect for this tutorial. Now you might be asking why can't we just resize this the same way we did last time, and that's because it won't fit anymore, leaving an ugly black bar on the side of the screen or squishing artwork elements together and overall breaking the aesthetic. We need to manually adjust these offending elements. Open Photoshop and load the background, as well as the two artwork files with spanned elements, Artwork 1 and Artwork 4. Let's start with Artwork 1. As you can see, the bombs currently line up with the explosions, but when we convert the theme to widescreen, there's going to be a lot more empty space in general, so I don't really feel the need to carry this trend through, and I think they look better just falling, with the explosions being separate. For now, just press Alt-Ctrl-I to bring up the image size menu, make sure Constrained Proportions is not selected, and reduce the image to 75% of its original width. Now let's switch to Artwork 4, which we must resize because the edges of the artwork are cut off. Press alt Control c to open the Canvas Size menu, make sure Pixels is selected, and set the width to 1365. Using the Marquee and Move tools at the top of your toolbar, select the offending elements and drag them to the edges of the screen, making sure not to leave any space. Hold down the Shift key when you're moving elements in order to keep them in line with their original position. With that finished, press alt Control i once again and bring up the image size properties, and shrink the width to 75%, or exactly 1024 pixels. Finally, we'll deal with the most complex part of this theme, the background, and we'll accomplish this using the exact same method. You can see that I've decided to split the theme about right down the middle in order to keep the group of three soldiers together on the left, with the speaking soldier on the bottom right corner. Since the game's title is in the center, this will help balance everything out. Earlier we noticed some minor blemishes in the black line on the left, so I'm going to carefully use the smudge tool to eliminate these by blending it in with the surrounding artwork. You'll find that, used properly, smudge is an extremely useful tool for cleaning up artwork. Just be cautious, only use as large of a brush as you need for the job, and be careful not to unintentionally blur the surrounding area. The goal is to seamlessly correct artwork errors without making new ones. If you make a mistake, simply press Ctrl Z to undo it, or Alt Ctrl Z to take multiple steps back. All that's left is to fill in the center of the background, and since this background is so simple, we can copy and paste from a clean section of it to do so. Select the area with a rectangle marquee, press Ctrl C to copy, and Ctrl V to paste. For every time we pasted, it added a new layer to the artwork, so now we need to select all of the layers on the right hand side, right click, and choose Convert to Smart Object. Right click again, and select Rasterize Layer. Press Alt Ctrl I, and once again shrink the width to 75%, or 1024 pixels. It's now time to apply Dark 13 scripts. We could have left the images we adjusted at 1365 pixels wide and used the 43 to 69 conversion script as we did before, but I want to show you the use of his No Scale Smooth script. As it sounds, No Scale Smooth applies a smoothing effect without resizing the image, so you can use it on anything you've manually resized or that didn't need resizing but will benefit from a clearer image, like certain backgrounds that we'll see in future tutorials. First I'm going to manually resize the last two artwork images, just so No Scale Smooth works on all of the art at once. Now we can run the No Scale Smooth script and carry on with all of the steps we covered in the last tutorial to finalize this theme. Here's the finished product. You can immediately see that, in widescreen, it looks much cleaner and more aesthetically pleasing than the 4x3 original. In this tutorial we've discussed how to resize themes with simple screen-wide artwork by manually repositioning or redrawing their elements. We've also covered some basic Photoshop functions, like Smudge. If Smudge doesn't work for you in a given situation, you can always rely on other tools like Pencil on a fine setting to get the job done. 
The best way to get comfortable with Photoshop is to experiment with it, but I'll continue providing examples of how we can use it to clean up and improve artwork in future tutorials. We'll also be discussing increasingly complex themes, so I hope you stop by again. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and found it informative and entertaining. As my way of thanking you for your support, I've included a link in the description below that will provide you with widescreen converted set of all existing themes for the Atari Classics XML, which you can also use in MAME. Thanks for stopping by and, as always, every time you like, share, or subscribe to AV Archivist, you emit funky fresh rhymes and good vibrations. It's just science. Have a great day.